Pew Mathematics, Paper 1, Wednesday, 5th June 2019. Answer all questions and ensure that your answers to parts of questions are clearly labeled. You should show sufficient working to make your methods clear. Answers without working may not gain full credit. Given that x plus 3 is a factor of f of x, find the value of the constant a. f of x is 3x cubed plus 2a squared, 2ax squared minus 4x plus 5a. So to solve this question, we use the factor theorem, which states that if f of x is a polynomial, then f of p is equal to zero, then x minus p is a factor of f of x. So if x plus three is a factor of f of x, that means f of minus three is equal to zero. So we're going to substitute x equals to minus three. So we substitute x equals to minus three in the polynomial, and that will be equals to zero. So three times minus three cube plus two a times minus three squared, minus four times minus three, plus five a equals to zero. Three times minus three cubed is minus 81, plus two a times minus three squared is nine, nine times two is 18, so that gives you 18a. Minus three times minus four is 12. So minus 81, plus 12, which gives you minus 69. 18a plus 5a, it gives you 23a. So minus 69 goes to the right, it becomes plus 69. Times 23 goes to the right, it becomes divided by 23. So 69 divided by 23 is three. So a is equals to three. Question number two. Figure one shows a plot of part of the curve with equation y equals to cos x, where x is measured in radians. Use diagram one to show why the equation cos x minus two x minus a half is equal to zero. So only one intersection means there is only one root. There's only one point of intersection between the line and the curve. That's the curve there, and that's the straight line. It's only one point of intersection. That means there's only one root. Now let's try and see how we can get the equation of the line. If we take minus two X to the right, it becomes plus two X. We take minus a half to the right, it becomes plus a half. So we have cos X on the left is equal to two X plus a half on the right. So on the left is cos X, which is this graph there. On the right is the line two x plus a half, which is that line there. So because it's equal, you want to find where the graph and the line, where do they meet because they are equal, they meet there. And they only meet at one point. So that means there's only one intersection and there's one root. So you plot the line y equals to two x plus half on the diagram and you make sure you have the correct gradient and correct intercept. When you do it, you draw it correctly to get the full mark. Given that the root of the equation is alpha and that alpha is small, use the small angle approximation for cos x to estimate the value of alpha to three decimal places. For small angle approximation, cos x is equals to one minus x squared over two. That is given to you in the formula book. So you just write one minus X squared over two and make sure X is in radians. Now you would replace cos X, all of cos X, you replace it with one minus X squared over two. That comes from the formula book for small angle approximation. Two X stays the same, minus a half stays the same, zero stays the same. Now, to get rid of the two in the denominator, you times everything by two. So two times one, two times that, two times that, two times that, two times that. So two times one will give you two. Two times this one will cross out with that two. 
two times two x will be four x two times a half would be one now you put this as a quadratic x squared minus four x two minus one is one so you have minus x squared minus four x plus one equals to zero you can multiply by minus one to get x squared plus four x minus one equal to zero use your calculator the number in front of x squared there is one the number in front of x is four the number on its own minus one and that will give you two answers minus two plus root five or two zero point two three six which is what you want an estimate to three decimal places so you want to put 0 0.236. As question number three, show that dy over dx is equals to a over x plus one to the power n, where a and n are constants to be found. So for question number three a, this is where we start and this is where we want to end. So we want to at the end we have dy over dx so we want to show that dy over dx so that means we have to differentiate to get from y to dy over dx it means we differentiate how do we differentiate that fraction we use quotient rule and this is quotient rule here that's the formula for quotient rule which you can get from the formula booklet although it's given slightly it's written differently the one at the top is called the u, the numerator is u, and the denominator is v. So u is 5x squared plus 10x. du over dx would be 5 times 2 is 10x, and you differentiate 10x, you get 10. v is the denominator, x plus 1 all squared. When you differentiate that, the 2 comes in front, it becomes 2 bracket x plus 1. Now, we've, we've differentiated it now. We know what V is, we know du over dx, we know u, we know dv over dx, and we want we know v squared. We put them in. So we put them in that quotient rule formula. So that's v squared. So we have here v at the bottom times du over dx, which is 10x plus 10. That's du over dx minus u which is this one, times dv over dx, which is this one, all divided by v squared, which is that v squared. And now with the long expression like that, you want to cancel out. So if you notice there's what x plus one there, x plus one there, x plus one at the bottom here. So one of them would cancel. This would cancel, you'll be left with one of them. This will cancel. This will cancel. It go from four to three of them. Now you will write it out. X plus one bracket ten x plus one. So one x plus one. Ten x plus one minus five x squared plus ten x times two. This x plus one has gone, and this will be now x plus one cube, because one of them has gone. So you're left with three. Now, when you remove the bracket, you get 10x squared plus 10x plus 10 plus 10 minus 10x squared minus 20x. So you expand the bracket at the top. Now, 10x squared will cancel with 10x squared. 10x plus 10x will be 20x minus 20x will be zero. So you are left with 10 at the top on the numerator and the denominator stays the same, which is what they wanted you to show. So this 10 is like this A at the numerator and the one X plus one all cube is the same like that. So your N is three. That's what they wanted you to show. So Q E D, quote erat demonstratum as required to show. For 3B it says hence, deduce the range of values for x for which dy over dx is less than zero. So instead of dy over dx, we're going to put 10 over x plus one all cube is less than zero. 
So the numerator is 10, which is a positive number. It's positive 10, the numerator is positive 10. So we cannot change nothing with that. So we want the denominator has to be less than zero. If we want all of this to be smaller than zero to be negative, all we can change is the denominator because the numerator is always positive 10. So we need the denominator to be less than zero. So the denominator has to be less than zero. So that means X plus one, all cube has to be less than zero. Take the cube to that side, it becomes cube root. Cube root of zero is zero. So X plus one should be less than zero. Plus one goes to this other side, to the right, it becomes minus. So X should be less than one, minus one. So when X is less than minus one, this dy over dx is less than zero. Question number four. Find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of one over square root of four minus x, giving each coefficient in its simplest form. To get the first three terms in the binomial expansion, we will use this formula there. So that's the formula for binomial expansion. And you get that from the formula book. So we need to put one over square root of four minus X in a way that we can expand it. So the square root can become X to the power half. And if we take it to the top, it becomes four minus X to the power minus a half. So you need to take out a factor of A to the N out of the expression. So if we take out our a to the n, if we compare it now, our a is four, our b is, bx is like this, our x, and our n is minus a half. So what comes out is a to the n. Since our a is four and our n is minus a half, so what comes out is four to the minus a half. The four is the a, the minus a half is the n. And we are left with one plus, B is minus X minus one X over A, which is four to the power minus a half. Now four to the power minus a half, it will give you a half. If you put that in your calculator, you'll get a half. And it will be one plus and minus will be minus one minus X over four to the minus a half. Now you're ready to use the expansion formula. So what you would do is you would have one minus X over four to the power minus a half, one plus minus a half is our N and then our X is minus X over four. Plus minus a half is our N Minus a half minus one is minus three over two, all over two factorial. And our X square is minus X over four all squared. And when we start to simplify that, we will have half bracket one, X over eight plus X three over eight times X squared over 16. So that's what you get. And then when you multiply by the half, you get half plus one over 16 X plus three over two, five, six X squared. And the next part, the expansion can be used to find an approximation to square root of two. Possible values of X that could be substituted are as follows. But this is without evaluating your expansion, state giving a reason which of the three values of x should not be used we're going to use this formula here i've circled it there the expansion of a plus b x to the power n where n is negative or a fraction is valid when x is less than a over b that formula there what's our a our a is four our b is minus one so the absolute value of x should be less than four over minus one. So that means absolute value of X should be less than four, which means minus four is less than X less than four. So between minus four and four. 
So which one should we not use x minus x equals to minus 14? Because it is goes from minus four to four, minus 14 is well outside. So minus 14 is there, minus four is there, and four is there. So minus 14 is not in that range. That's why. So the expansion also, the expansion is not, the expansion is not valid for X, so absolute value of X greater than four. So that's what you can write as well. Next one, state given a reason which of the three values of X would lead to the most accurate approximation to root two. X equals to minus a half. Why? Since the smaller value would give the more accurate approximation. So the smaller the value gives a more accurate approximation. It is closest to zero. So it will give more accurate approximation. Question number five. Write f of x in the form a bracket x plus b all squared plus c where a, b, and c are integers to be found. So this is where we start and this is where we end. So you start, you want to end over there. So you notice there's an A out there. So we can take that two out of the bracket. So we factorize two out and you, this four is the same as two times two. So it will be, if you multiply two times X squared is two X squared, two times two X is four X. So this will be nine over two because two times nine over two is nine. Now we want to complete the square of what is in found inside this bracket. Complete the square, you find half of the coefficient of X, the number in front of X, you find half of it. Half of two is one. And then you square it and then it will be X plus one all squared. If you multiply X plus one all squared, you get x plus one plus x plus one. That gives you x squared plus two x plus one. So we've got the x squared plus two x, which is the same like that x squared plus two x, but we don't want this one. What's the opposite of plus one? Minus one. So that's why we minus one there. And we have the nine over two. So we still have our x plus two squared. When we remove that one, and then nine over two stays the same. So minus a half, minus one plus nine over two, it gives you seven over two. So your answer, you remove the bracket two times that is two bracket x plus one squared, and two times seven over two, it gives you seven. So your a is two, that your b is one, and your c is seven. So A is two, one, B is one, C is seven. So that's how you have changed it from one form to another. Question 5B says we should sketch the curve with equation Y equals to F of X showing points of intersection with the coordinate axis and any turning point. The turning point is at the bottom there, which is minus one, seven. So it comes from there. You change that to minus one and then that for the seven for the Y. So this, plus one there, you change it to minus one, as your X is minus one, and this one is your seven, that's the turning point. So that's one of the reason why we change it to this form. And where does it cross the Y axis? When you put X is zero, this will be zero plus one squared is one. Zero plus one is one, one squared is one times two is two plus seven is nine. So it crosses at zero, nine. So you can mark that and that gives you a U-shape you, you sketch. So the Y-intercept is zero, 09, the minimum at minus 17. You must take those coordinates and those points to get the full mark. And if you have a graphics calculator, you can put it on it and see what it looks like. So some people can just put it straight into their graphics calculator and you will see the Y-intercept is zero, 09, zero, 09, Y-intercept and the minimum point minus one seven minimum point so the calculator will give you that answer and then you can check with what you have done through algebra question 5c describe fully the transformation that maps the curve with equation y equals to f of x 
onto the curve with equation y equals to g of x. So before is the blue one, when you put it in your graphics calculator, and after is the red one. So what can you see visually that has happened? So the minimum point before was minus one seven. That was the minimum point there, minus one seven. That was the minimum point there. But what is the minimum point after? The minimum point after is one three. So what has changed the minimum point? So what's the difference? The difference between after minus before one minus minus one will give you two. One minus minus one will give you two. And then three minus seven will give you minus four. So the new, the difference is that two and minus four. That is what has been translated by. So it's translated by two for the X and minus four for the Y. So two plus two to the right and minus four down. So the minimum point has translated plus two to the right, one, two, and minus four down. That's what that means for the new graph. And you can see the minimum point there, one, three for the new one. Find the range of the function, h of x equals to that. So this is where we start and this is where we end after we. So we started with that, the 21 stays the same in the numerator. The denominator, we completed the square and have it like this. Now, if you put two times minus one plus one all squared plus seven, it gives you seven. And so the maximum value is when 21 divided by seven, 21 divided by seven, or when X is minus one. So when X is minus one, all of this, this would be minus one plus one is zero, zero squared, is zero plus seven, so it's 21 over seven. 21 over seven is three. So you're going from zero, to start, you go from zero up to three. And if you look at the curve there, it starts from this bottom point there, zero, and it goes to this top point three. So that's what the range is, from zero up to three. That's the range there. So it's less than zero. It doesn't include zero because it doesn't touch this line. It does not touch this line x, y equals to zero. So that's why it says less than. So it starts from zero, less than zero, and then it goes up to three because it touches that point three there. So that's what the range is. And even if you change the scale for that graph to see it, you can see even when you get to minus 37 on the X and plus 38 on the other end, you can see it comes closer to zero. It shouldn't really be touching it. And then the top is three. So zero up to three. And that's what they call the range. So when you change this, this scale, it does not go below zero. Try it for yourself with your graphics calculator from minus 40 to 40. You will see it never goes below zero. And it never goes above three. And this is some definition on how to find the range of a function. So you can follow these instructions when you have future questions to help you find the range of a function. You write down y equals to f of x, solve the equation, find the domain, and then if you can't solve it, you use a graph to find the range. And that's what we've been using, using the graph to find the range. And how to find the domain and range of a function. Another way is to identify function is by using graphs. Because domain refers to the input values. And the input values are the ones you found the x-axis. And then the range is a set of possible output values, which are shown on the y-axis. So read those and that will help you to do future questions. So that's question five, but question five, that's question five A and B.
Question 5C, part 1. Question 5C, part 2. And the rest of question 5. Question number 6. Solve for minus 180 to 180 degrees. 5 sine 2 theta equals to 9 tan theta. So we can write sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta. You must remember that conversion. We can write sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta. The 5 times the 2 will give us 10. And we can write tan theta as sine theta over cos theta. You must remember that. Now we can take cos theta to the left hand side multiply it to the left hand side. So this cos on the right will multiply with the cos on the left and that will give you the cos squared. Because there's two of them now. So you got 10 sine theta cos squared theta is equal to nine sine theta. We replace the cos squared theta with one minus sine squared theta. Replace cos squared theta with one minus sine squared theta. So when you do that, all the cosine will disappear you only have things with sine 10 sine theta minus 10 cu sine cube theta minus nine sine theta. It's all sine theta, sine theta, sine theta. So you can factorize sine theta is there, there and there. It comes out of the bracket. You have 10 minus 10 sine squared theta minus nine. 10 minus nine is one. So sine theta is equals to zero is one option. O, 10 minus sine squared theta minus nine is equal to zero, another option. 10 minus nine is one. You take it to the right-hand side, it becomes minus one. So let's solve the left-hand side first. Sine theta is zero. We want between minus 180 and plus 180. Inverse sine of zero is zero. So when is sine, inverse sine of zero, zero is at one minus 180, zero and 180 degrees. You can plot the graph of y equals to sine x and you can see it yourself. So zero there, zero there, zero there, minus 180, zero, 180. And this one, minus 10 will go to the right, it becomes divided by one over 10. So minus one divided by minus 10 will give you plus one over 10. What's the opposite of squared? Square root. So you find square root of one over 10, which will be minus square root of one over 10 and plus square root of one over 10.
So if you have this minus 0.223, when you plot the graph, you make that value less negative. Less negative, if you have minus 0.223 from here, to make it less negative, you want to get in something which is on this other side. So you want to get a number which is going to the right hand side. This is a less negative. So you can use 0 0.2, minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.1, a bigger number. If you look at the various graphs here, the original one is the blue one. If it's going slowly, you, if you use minus 0 0.1 instead of minus 0 0.2, you'll get this red one. And if you use minus 0 0.2, you'll get this green one. So the red one is decreasing the slowest because you can see it's coming down gently, but the blue one is coming down fast, faster. This one is coming down gently. So that's what it means by making it less negative to decrease slowly. And for part B, you can also do it on the calculator. Once you have done your graph on your calculator, you can use something they call enter the X value and when you put X is 10, so you press G solve on your calculator and go to Y calculate and you put X is 10. When you put X is 10, it will give you a Y value of 2,150. That's how you can use the calculator to check your answer is correct. So that is question seven. The answer to question seven A where you would substitute these values and then you work out K to be 0.223. Answers to question 7B and 7C. For 7B, you substitute the value of 10 for T and put in your calculator, you get 2,150. And then for 7C, make minus 0.223 less negative. And these are graphs to compare which one is steeper. This one is less steep, this one is steeper. And less negative means numbers to the right of 0.223, minus 0.223. So that's part, question 7C. Question number eight. Figure two shows a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals to x bracket x plus two bracket x minus three. Part A, show that the exact area of R1 is 20 over 3. To show that the exact area of R1 is 20 over 3, we need to integrate. And to integrate, we need to expand this, multiply this trinomial. So when you multiply it out, you will get x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x. So you do the first two x squared, x times x is x squared, x times two is two x, and then you multiply with x minus four. Or you can do this two first, and then after you multiply with x, because it is, um, multiplication is distributive, you can choose any two and do first, and you get this x cubed minus two x squared minus eight x. Now you want to integrate from minus two up to zero. And we're using this formula for integration. Add one to the power, divide by the new power. So you add one plus N divided by N plus one. So when you integrate that, you would get X cubed, you get X to the power four divided by four. And then you do the same for integrating 2x squared and integrate 8x. So when you integrate, you will get x to the four divided by four, add one to that two, you get three, and then you divide by three, add one to that one, you get two, and you divide eight divided by two, you get four. And you would in substitute the value zero first, and you substitute minus two. When you substitute zero, you put zero there, you put zero there, and you put zero there. All of that will be zero. So that's what you'll get, you get zero. After that, you put minus two, minus two there, minus two, minus two. 
and that would give you 4 minus 16 over 3 minus 16. And you put it in your calculator, you get 20 over 3. QED, because it says show that. So as required to show. Part 8B, the region R2 also shown shaded in figure 2 is bounded by the curve, the positive x-axis and the line with equation x equals to b, where b is a positive constant. But B says verify that B satisfy this equation. So what you want to do, you want to expand and then you compare. And we know that R2 is minus 20 over three. So R2 is that area there and we know that's equals to minus 20 over three. And the minus is because it's below the X axis. So the minus is because it's below the X axis. So, and we got that from integrating from zero to V and that gives you 20 over three. So when we have this expression, if we multiply by 12 on all through times 12 that would give us and then we can factorize to get that but if you just multiply by 12 to go from this step to this step here the 4 will cancel 12 divided by 4 is 3 so you get 3 b4 12 times minus 2 divided by 3 that will give you 8 so 12 times that divided by 3 that gives you 8 12 times minus 4 gives you minus 48. And then when you multiply this by 12, and then you divide by 3, you get 80. But if you, you want to form an equation which is equals to 0. Now, the part where you want to show that the two equations are the same, very important. So what you want to do is you take the answer that is given in the question, change it to look like that so that when you change the other one you can compare them to look the same so if you expand b plus 2 all squared that'll give you b squared plus 4b plus 4. now the two equations are the same because if you were to multiply you can multiply it out Follow those lines there to multiply it out. You will get this expression underneath. And 3b to the 4, you got that. Minus 20b cube and 12b cube will give you minus 8b cube. Plus 20b squared and minus 80b squared and 12b squared will give you minus 48b squared. So after that, you can compare and you can see that the 3B4 is equal to that. 8B cube, 48B squared, 80 is the same, and the zero. So you have shown that they're equally, they're equal. So what you have done, you have changed the answer to a new form so that you can compare them. It's quicker and easier that way. So in the exams, they'll give you a mark for rearranging the equation to get the quartic equation, a quartic equation like that one. You get a mark for expanding the equation and a mark for showing and stating that the equations are the same. So stating that this equation is the same like that equation. Question 8C, explain with the eight of a diagram the significance of the root 5.442. So what's the significance of 5.442? So between x equals to minus two and b equals to 5.442, the area above the x-axis is the same as the area below the x-axis. So that is what you want to say. 
the area above the x-axis is the same as the area below the x-axis. You can also look at it this way. The area above the x-axis, you can see there is 36.03, this top area, area above the x-axis. is the same as this one, R4, which is 36.03, which is the same the area below the x-axis. So 36.03 for the area below the x-axis is the same as the area above the x-axis, 36.03. That's what you need to say. Or you can state that the area between 1.225 and 4 is the same as the area between four and 5.442. Or you can see the net area is minus 20 over three. So that's what you need to show and to see. And for those who use their graphics calculator, you can put this in your graphics calculator, the integration use that integration part in the graphics calculator that integration symbol there from minus two to zero you'll get the answer of 20 over three but you need to show you're working in an exam so this could just be a way to check if your answer is correct and first if you plotted your graph on the calculator this is the view window which you can use and you would plot the curve y1 the blue and then the green line is there. And that would give you, you can work out this point where it crosses the Y axis. You can work out that point where they meet. You can work out that point there. So the graphics calculator can work out those points for you. So this is just for you to be able to do it and check certain things. That's question eight. That's the first part to question eight, question eight A, question eight B. Still question 8B, question 8C, still question 8C, using the calculator to find the integral and how to plot the graphs on the graphics calculator. So for this question eight, the first six marks in this question relating to definite integral with the area under the curve was straightforward and lots of students would do this correctly and had the mark. But only the best candidates were able to do get the last four with many struggling to explain the last part of this question. And when this exam was marked, most students could not give full explanations to the significance for part C. And only the very best candidates could do that. So be careful with that when you do your own exams look out for things like this and make your explanation clear and for part b students were confused between the minus 20 over 3 what it meant so it's very important to think about these things when you do your exams and try not to make things very complicated when you want to prove things look at them in easier ways okay i hope that helps for this question Question number nine, given that A is greater than B is greater than zero and that A and B satisfy the equation, show that A is equal to B squared over B minus one. So we start with log A minus log B is equal to log of A minus B, and that's where we want to end. So the way you do this kind of questions, you look at where you start and where you end. What do you see in the start and what do you see in the end? So that you can start to know what you can change. If you notice there's locks in the start, but in the end there's no, there's no lock. So that means we have to eliminate the locks. We have to do something and get rid of them. So we start by thinking about the formula for log rhythms. So log A minus log B is the same as log of A divided by B. So we can start by putting this first one, log A minus log B, 
we put it as log of a divided by b, that equals to log a minus b. Now we can remove logs on both sides. So a over b is equals to a minus b. So once you've taken out the logs, you can take b to the right hand side. So a becomes b bracket a minus b. And then you remove the bracket. So a is equals to b a minus b squared. Now minus b squared goes to the left. It becomes plus b squared. And a goes to the right. It becomes minus a. You factorize. A will come out of the bracket and you left with B minus one. So that means A is equals to B squared divided by B minus one. QED, quote errat demonstratum as required to show. Question 9B, write down the full restriction on the value of B explaining the reason for these restrictions. So B is not equals to one. So it's not defined at B equals to one because if you put one there, one minus one is zero. So B squared over one minus one, B squared over zero is not defined. You cannot divide by zero. And B is greater than one. Since A is bigger than zero, B squared over B minus one is bigger than zero. So B is bigger than one since B squared is positive. So for this to be positive, B has to be bigger than one. If it is less than one, this would be negative and positive at the top, positive at the top, negative at the bottom will give you negative. So B minus one has to be bigger than zero. Since the B squared at the top is positive, this one below has to be bigger than one to be positive as well. So then A is greater than zero. So that's question 9A, and that's question 9B. So from the examiner's report, there were many good attempts to this question. And most students were able to achieve the first part, but the part B was only for the very best students who could do it. But what happened was some of the students could not remember this log A minus log B, most candidates could not, some of the candidates could not remember that formula. And that is why they couldn't gain that mark. But for those who remember it, they will be able to do it properly. And for the part B, there was a bit of difficulty for some students to know what infinity or undefined is. So that's why they couldn't get part B done properly. Question number 10. Prove that for all n an element of natural numbers, n squared plus two is not divisible by four. For this question, you can use an algebraic proof. So you can use n is equal to two m. And so n squared plus two will be four m squared plus two. And you conclude that this number is not divisible by four. If you use that, as the explanation is tribal. For n equals to two m plus one, n squared plus two would be two m plus one all squared plus two. And you have to have correct working and you conclude that this number is in the four times table and at three. So it cannot be divisible by four. Or you can write it as four bracket m squared plus m. So what you're doing is you are using an even number two times. An even number is like a multiple of two. So like two times one, two times two. So you can call it two M multiplied by two is an even number. So you put two M, replace N with it. So it becomes two M squared. It becomes four M squared. But if you look at four M squared plus two, four times M squared, it's a multiple of four because it's times four. 
but with two added to it, you've added two at the end. So it cannot be divisible by four because times four means a multiple of four. But when you add two, it cannot be divisible by four. Now you try with an odd number because we've done it with an even number. We try with an odd number. An odd number is two times m plus one because two times m is even number. And when you add one to an even number, you get an odd number. So two m plus one is an odd number. So we would use two m plus one squared, put it there, two m plus one squared plus two. And that will give us four m squared plus four m plus three. We can factorize four out. So you get four bucket m squared plus m plus three. This is four times bucket m squared plus three. Because you multiplying by four, it's a multiple of four. But when you add three, you cannot divide by four. So four times m squared plus four is like, you know, four times table, four times one, four times two. But when you add three, it cannot be divisible by four. So you can say hence for all n and element of natural number, n plus two is not divisible by four. So remember the idea of proof is something which is new in this specification. And it is not well known. And most students did not answer this question. So when you're revising, make sure you learn these ideas of proof and that would help you to be able to do this type of questions in the exams. So for part two, given that X is an element of R, the value of three X minus 28 is greater than or equal to the value of X minus nine. State given reason if the above statement is always true, sometimes true or never true. So you will say the statement is not true for between 9.25 and 9.5. For example, pick a number in the middle of that 9.4. If you put 9.4 there, three times 9.4 minus 28, 0 0.2. And if you put 9.4 there, 9.4 minus nine is 0 0.4. So that sh shows that 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. The statement is sometimes true. For example, if you pick, take a number like 12, if you put 12 there, three times 12 minus 28, it gives you eight and 12 minus nine, it gives you three. And you can also do it on a graph if you are using the graphics calculator. So there are points where three X minus 28 is less than X minus nine and points where three X minus 28 is greater than X minus nine. So three X minus 28, the absolute value is the one in blue and x minus nine is the one in red. So that's three x minus 28, and that's x minus nine. So there will be points where the blue graph will be below the red one, and the points where it will be above. So that's the view window, your settings, so that you can see it clearly. And you can see here, these points mark here. So this part is below. The blue is below the red on this part, and in this one is above there, and it's above there. So the graphs can help you to see the points where it x three x minus twenty eight is below x minus nine. That means where the blue graph is below the red line. So that's more another part of the graph. So statement is not true for 9.25 less than X less than 9.5 because that part is, it doesn't satisfy the conditions. Question number 11, a competitor is running a 20 kilometers race. Part A, show that her time to run the first six kilometer is estimated to be 36 minutes, 55 seconds. So we can use this formula, new value is equals to original value times multiplier to the power N. So when N equals to one, you get six times 1.05. When N equals to two, six times 1.05 to the power two. 
And how do we get the multiplier? You add 100 to the 5% and you divide by 100. So five plus 100, it gives you 105. 105 divided by 100, it gives you 1.05. So you can get your total and one minute is 60 seconds. So 0.915 minutes is 0.915 times 60, which is 54.9, which is approximately 55 seconds. So you would get 36 minutes and 55 seconds. And you can write it all like that. 24 plus six times 1.05 plus six times 1.05 squared. And you put that all in your calculator at once. You get 36.915 and you change it 0.915 to seconds, which is 55 seconds. Part B, show that her estimated time in minutes to run her R kilometer for five less than R less than 20 is six times 1.05 to the R minus four. So fifth kilometer is six times 1.05 to the power one. Six kilometer is that seven. And then the R kilometer is that. That's how you can look at the first kilometer, six minutes, second, six minutes, third, six minutes, fourth, six minutes. The fifth would be one, six times 1.05 to the power one, because five minus four is one. The sixth would be six times 1.05 to the power two, six minus four gives you two. And for the seven, six times 1.05 to the power three, because it's seven minus three. So the seven, minus four, it gives you three, six minus four, it gives you two, and it'll be eight minus four gives you four. And for the arrow, it'll be arrow minus four. So that's how you get that. Number 11 C, estimate the total time in minutes and seconds that would take to complete the race. So the first four kilometer added to the time taken from fifth to 20th kilometer. So you would have 24 plus, for, you start from five and you end at 20. So you start from five, you end at 20, and you want to use this expression there, which you can use a calculator to do that for you, or you can use the geometric formula. S equals to A, the sum, get this from the formula book. S equals to A back at one minus R to the N over one minus R. And A is six times 1.05 and R is 1.05. N is 20 minus four, which is 16. So you substitute N is 16. R is 1.05 and A is 6.3. And you work that out and it gives you total time of 173 minutes and three seconds. So the total time should be given in minutes and seconds. So this is a table which you can generate this table from your calculator. You have these kilometers, time per kilometers, and then the total time. So that's something to show you to, to think about. Question number 12, show that the X coordinate of the turning point of the curve with equation Y equals F of X as by the equation tan X is equals to four. So what you want to do is you want, you got F of X because it says turning points, that means you differentiate. We've got turning point dy over dx equals to zero. So f dash of x is the same as dy over dx. That means you differentiate f of x. And then you put it equals to zero. dy over dx is equals to zero at turning points. So when you differentiate that, you put it equals to zero. So either e to the minus 0 0.25 x is equals to zero, which you would ignore that because that's not possible. O 
this expression is equals to zero. And that means 10 cos x is equals to 2.5 sine x. We want to take cos x to the right side. So we divide by cos x and you have, and then you take 2.5 to the left and you divide by 2.5 on the left. So you got 10 divided by 2.5 is equals to sine x divided by cos x. Sine divided by cos is tan. So sine x divided by cos x is tan x. You must remember that. So that means tan x, 10 divided by 2.5 is 4. QED as required to show. For question 12b, you can see that as it bounces, the height decreases. So decreasing height and make sure the height is above the X axis is bigger than zero and is decreasing, it's coming down. This one is taller, shorter, keeps going down. The height is decreasing. And if you put it in your calculator, plot in your graphics calculator, use this view window so that you can see it clearly. And that's what you will see if you do it in your calculator. For question 12c, use this model to find the maximum height of the ball above the ground between the first and second bounce. So you can see here, that's the height at second bounce. So dy over dx is equals to zero. If you use your calculator, dy over dx is equals to zero. So x will be 4.47 and you get y to be 3.1. So that's the calculator telling you the answer. But let's do the working now to show it. So you know tan x is equals to four, x equals to 1.326. So t is equals to pi plus 1.326. That gives you 4.47. So you want to solve tan x equals to four and substitute into h of t. So inverse tangent of four is 1.326 and tan repeats every 180 degrees O pi. 180 degrees is same like pi radians. And if you have H of T is 10 E to the minus 0 0.5 T sine T, you want to replace T with 4.47, 4.47. So you replace T with 4.47 Put that in your calculator, that will give you 3.17 meters. For question 12D, explain why this model should not be used to predict the time of each bounce. The time between each bounce should not stay the same when the heights of each bounce are getting smaller. As the height is getting smaller, the time does not stay the same. That's question 12, question 12A, question 12B, question 12C, and question 12D. Question number 13, the curve C with equation y equals to p minus 3x over 2x minus q bracket x plus 3, where p and q are constant passes through the points three and a half, three and a half, and has two vertical asymptotes. Explain why you can deduce that Q equals to four. And the asymptote is found where two X minus Q equals to zero. So two X minus Q equals to zero, hence Q is equals to four. Now, if we have two X minus Q equals to zero, and we are told that x is equal to two. So two times two minus q equals to zero, two times two is four, four minus q equals to zero. Take q to the right hand side, it becomes positive. So q equals to four. Part B says, show that p is equals to 15. We substitute x equals to three, y is equals to a half and q is equals to a four. So you follow those blue line, x equals to three there, x is three there, x is three, 
and then y equals to a half and q, q equals to four so you simplify that and you cross multiply so two times p minus nine is equal to six minus four is two three plus three is six so two times six is twelve so it'll be twelve times one so that's twelve on the right hand side so we, and then you divide by two first so p minus nine is equals to six twelve divided by two is six you take minus nine to the other side p is equals to six plus nine that gives you 15. Figure four shows a sketch of part of the curve C. The region arrow shown shaded in figure four is bounded by the curve C with X axis, the line and the equation X equals to three. Show that the exact value of the area of arrow is A lin two plus B lin three. So we want to do use partial fractions. So we want to change 15 minus three X over two X minus four X plus three. Is equals to a over 2x minus 4 plus b over x plus 3. And to do partial fractions, we multiply we have to multiply the denominator there. Multiply it by a, multiply it by b. So no 15 minus 3x is equals to a bracket that plus b that. What we want to do, we want to make a zero. So you think of a number that will make this one zero. What's the opposite of plus three? minus three so we use minus three so minus three plus three will give you zero so a will become zero and you put there this one will become minus 10 b that will give b to be minus 2.4 and the next thing is we look for what can we put to make b zero the 2x minus 4 is equal to zero so 2x is equal to 4, x is equal to 2. So we use x to be 2. When you use x to be 2, this b will be 0, and you will find a to be 9 over 5. So you got a, and you know b, which you can write down in the... So we have this integral now. It becomes 0 0.9 divided by x minus 2 minus 2.4 divided by x plus 3. So 0 0.9 can come out of the bracket. This will be lin 2. And then when you integrate, you get 0 0.9 lin 2x minus 4 plus 2.4 lin x plus 3. Now we integrate with going from 3 to 5. So we've got, if we have 15 x 15 minus 3 x equals to 0, 15 is equals to 3 x, so x equals to 5. So that's how we got the 5 there. Another way is if you have to put the graph in your calculator and you see the point there where it crosses the x axis, that point is 5, 0. That's where you get the point 5 there. That's where that 5 comes from five zero and that's where you put the graph there in your calculator and that's your line x equals to three so we get the area by substituting the values for five and for three and you substitute five in there and five in there after that put three and you put three and when you put five you get all of this expression at the top and two times five is 10 minus four is six. Five plus three is eight. Two times three is six minus four is two. Three plus three is six. And then you do the same 0 0.9 lin six. You put these two together and minus 2.4 lin six. So, and you will get this is 0 0.9 lin 2, 2.4 lin 8. So you put them together and you would end up with, you see 0 0.9 plus 2.4. 0 0.9 plus 2.4 gives you this 3.3.
0 0.9 plus 2.4 will give you 3.3. .3. And 7.2 and 0 0.9 will give you 8.4. So it gives you 8.1. 8, 8 and then you can put them together. And remember, 2.4 lean 8. 8 is the same as 2 cube. 2 times 2 times 2. So the 3 can come in front. So 3 times 2.4 gives you 7.2 lean 2. That's how we got 7.2 lean 2 there. Because we change the 8 as 2 cube and put the 3 in front. And now you can change six as three times two. Six is the same as three times two. So it's 3.3 .3 lin three plus 3.3 .3 lin two minus 8.1 lin two. And now 3.3 .3 minus 8.1, it gives you minus 4.8. So you have 3.3 .3 lin three minus 4.8 lin two. That's what you get. And you can swap them and put minus 4.8 lin 2 in front and 3.3 .3 lin 3 at the end so that you have something similar to what the one you to show for the area. And you can use your calculator to check. If you put the integral, if we use the integral of that expression dx, you get 0 0.2983. And if you put 3.3 .3 lin 3 minus 4.8 lin 2, you get 0 0.298. So if you notice the two answers are the same. So your two answers are the same. That means you have done it correctly. That's how you can check your answer using the calculator. Very important to do that, especially if you've done a long question where you don't have time to go back to check all the mistakes. So very important to be able to use the graphics calculator to do it. You can watch some of my videos on how to use the graphics calculator or subscribe in my channel and you will see all the different types of ways to use the graphics calculator to check your answers for A-level exam questions. Question number 14. The curve C in the standard Cartesian plane is defined by the equation. But A, find the value of the y over the x at the origin. So x is equals to four sine two y. We're going to use this formula here. dy over dx is one over dx over dy. You need to remember that. So dx over dy, you differentiate with respect to y, it will be eight cos two y. And dy over dx will be one over that. So be one over eight cos two y. So when y is equals to zero, so dy over dx, you substitute y is zero. One over eight times cos zero is one over eight. So at zero, zero, dy over dx is 1 over 8. Part B says use small angle approximation. So sine 2y is approximately 2y. So that means x is approximately 8y. This is a small angle approximation formula. Sine theta is approximately theta. Tan theta is approximately theta. So that means x is equals to 4 times 2y which gives you 8y. And part two, explain the relationship between the answers. So that when x and y are small, x equals to four sine two y approximate to the line x equals to 8y. You can rearrange x equals to 8y to get the equation of a line because line is y equals to mx plus c. So from the first part, from bi, y equals to one over eight x. You take eight to the other side, you divide. So y equals one over eight x. So m is one over eight and the intercept is zero on the y axis. From part a, dy over dx is one over eight. So the value on in a is the gradient of the line in b. So the gradient here is the same like this one. So the value in A is that gradient there. That's what we're saying. For part 14C, we want to show that for all points X, Y line on C, dy over dx is equal to that. So we know dy over dx is one over eight cos two Y. 
So we cut here, we can divide by four. So we got sine two y is equals to x over four. Remember that, I'm going to use it. And we need to use sine squared two y plus cos squared two y equals to one. And cos squared two y will be one minus sine squared two y. So we have x equals to four sine two y. So that means sine squared two y is equals to x over four squared. So we square that and square that. If we square sine squared two y, we square the other side. Now we know cos squared two y is one minus sine squared two y. So it's one minus x over four squared. We replace sine squared x over four squared. Now take the square root. So cos two y is square root of one minus x over four squared. Which we can, from there we know, we want to change it to look like that dy over the x equals to that. So we know cos 2y is square root of one minus x over four squared. And then we got dy over the x is one over eight cos 2y. So one over eight, and then there's the cos 2y. We can look here to simplify it. One minus x squared over 16 becomes 16 minus x squared over 16, which is 16 minus x squared over square root of 16 and we come square root of 16 minus x squared over four. And this four times eight, eight divided by four will give you two. And you would end up with one over two square root of 16 minus x squared. So that two is like your A, so your A is two. The 16 is your B, so you have found A and B. So that's question 14. That's question 14A. Question 14B, question 14C, and the last part of question 14.